pleased to welcome a good friend and colleague, Howard Partridge. Howard, it's great to have you on the program. Great to be here. You know, Howard, it's been a while since we talked. Um, trade shows, you know, we, maybe we didn't see each other. Uh, looking forward to seeing you in person in the near future. But tell me this, Howard, um, are you still in business? Of course. <laughs> of course. What kind of question is that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, tell us, how are things going for you, you and your company? Uh, well, let's see. Phenomenal. And just in case we both forget, it's right here on my shirt. I've seen that word before. Yes. <laughs> yeah, things are phenomenal, over the top, amazing. So, you know, when the pandemic hit, a lot of companies, I know you run a cleaning company. Yep. Um, you're probably not out there pushing the wand, but, you know, you're involved. They struggled. And I think you had a different situation. Tell us about how you made it through the pandemic. Was business good for you? Yeah. So uh, not only am I not pushing a wand, I don't even work there. I literally have a staff and systems and a culture that I created a long time ago that have just continued to do well. We initially were down about 20% in sales. And of course, when the pandemic first hit, like it was, you know, crazy, nobody knew what was going on, but uh, we paid every single team member and we didn't let anybody go. We didn't lay anybody off. We paid every single person enough. And I said, I don't care if I have to take this out of my own money, my own paycheck. I am not going to let, we got people that have been with us for over 20 years. You think I'm just going to, you know, let them let them go. There's no way. I mean, if I have to lose, I mean, I was prepared to lose. If I had to lose $200,000 to keep my team of my own money, I would do that. And it was so cool because, uh, I got my, my operations director showed up one day, uh, several months into the sometime last year in 2020, I forget exactly when it was, but he texted me, he said, Hey, you're going to be home. Cause I work here out of my house. And I said, yeah, he said, I got something for you. And uh, he shows up and I uh, had this like, you know, edible arrangement and a pile of papers. And I was like, you know, what is that? And he said, uh, you'll see, it was a personal note from every single team member that we have. And we've got about 30 over there. And this year, uh, 2021, without me even being there, I'm never there. It's turnkey. I, I don't, I'm never literally there. And I know people can't believe that maybe even think that that's kind of weird, you know, but they do such a phenomenal job. We grew, they grew, it's my company, uh, by almost a million dollars in sales this year over last year and doubled the profits. And I did literally nothing. I don't even sign checks, nothing. Well, you talk about how you don't do anything. I'm sure you have other things to do. I see some books behind yeah. you there. So plenty of... I write books and I do seminars and I run my coaching company called Phenomenal Products. And uh, so I'm very busy. Yes. All right. You know, um, you talk about your team. You're able to be here today. And, and this morning, I believe you were doing some writing on your book as well. Your, yeah. your company's running automatically. Let's talk for a moment about how you built your, I guess you call it a dream team. And I know you're going to work on a series of articles about this for Clean Facts and our other publications. Can you touch on that? What did you do? Yeah. So here's the thing. What I, what I don't understand is that people are like, oh, you can't find good people. Uh, nobody wants to work and all this kind of stuff. Meanwhile, I think we hired uh, three or four uh, technicians. I did do one thing this year. I did a five-minute interview, just a rubber stamp. I like this person. You can hire them. I did do that. And I think we had four assistants uh, start this year. And uh, what I did, the first thing is, is that I created this eight-part uh, framework on how to build a phenomenal dream team. And this is how I did it. The first thing is, is that I noticed that people don't do is uh, A, they don't, um, they don't go out looking for people, you know, they don't notice people and there are people all around you every single day, everywhere you go, the gas station, the restaurant, the, the, the grocery store out on jobs. I mean, at literally everywhere 
but people just walk around like this and then they're like, Oh, I need to hire somebody. And so they go on indeed or whatever and, and, and place an ad and get somebody who doesn't work out. So that's the first mistake. The second mistake is that when they do meet someone, even if they thought about, Hey, this person would be a great person to be on my team. They don't attract them because they're not attractive. Maybe they got some stinking thinking. They got attitude problems. They don't dress right. They haven't, you know, they got their, they're just, their demeanor is like, uh, you know, I hate my job. I hate, you know, uh, what I do and my customers stink and, and the weather and all this kind of stuff. You got to attract people. And the way that you attract people is by noticing them and uh, helping everybody that you meet get what it is that they want. Encourage them. If they need help with something, help them and they'll be attracted to you. And I believe that you could build your company just through networking because most people that we're talking about talking to right now, you know, you might need one person, two people. You don't need like a whole team of people. You just need to hire one good person right now. And they are out there. Well, I know you're proud of your team and uh, we look forward to the advice you'll put in writing in the future articles we're working on. Uh, last thing I want to talk about is something I saw on social media. You did a recording about New Year's resolutions. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think you're kind of negative about those. Tell us about that. Well, uh, first of all, I make New Year's resolutions every single year and I love New Year's resolutions and like what I do this time of the year is like, I'm planning all my goals for next year. I've been planning since October, but like, I love it, you know, but most people, the new year's resolutions don't work. And the reason that they don't work is because of something that I call in my book, FTI failure to implement. They just don't do the things that they need to do to make those goals come true. There's 10 principles. There's 10 mistakes that people overlook. They might set the goal in January, boy, they're, they're in the gym, they're working out. By March, the gyms are empty, right? And so how do you make sure that you reach those goals? And I reach more goals every single year, year after year after year, because I follow the 10 principles, what I call the 10 principles of phenomenal performance that are in this book. I'm doing a webinar next week on this, and I have a whole course on this, and it's what our whole coaching program is all about is uh, how to help people learn the proven systems and to implement those systems. So if to wrap this up, do you want to share any words of wisdom to the cleaning industry as we go into 22? Yes. Uh, so we're talking about how to build a phenomenal dream team. So notice people, add value to them. Mr. Ziegler said you can have everything in life you want if you'll just help enough other people get what it is that they want. If you're fortunate enough to get great people like I have been, uh, and there's this thing called the great resignation happening right now, uh, go get those people and learn how to be a coach, okay? Leadership is coaching, and understanding how to lead people is, is being able to coach them, ask them good questions, and help them get what it is that they want, and avoid this whole idea of trying to be a boss, you know, and I think that that's the part of the challenge is that people are intimidated in the cleaning industry. There's, there's a lot of this, that there's a lot of ego. It's about equipment and, and products and all that. It's not about that. It's about leadership. It's about understanding how to lead people. So I would say that the, everything rises and falls on leadership. So do yourself a favor, learn how to be a phenomenal leader learn how to be a phenomenal coach so that your players can perform for you.